Hi, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com. I'm an evolution astrologer and an energy worker and also a channel. And at tdjacobs.com, you'll find a ton of tools uh, to help you uh, along your path, wherever you are, whatever phase of evolution you're in right now, uh, including program crystals, astrology courses, readings, sound bites, and also uh, resources on Chiron, including the Chiron book, Chiron 2012 in the Aquarian Age, the key and how to use it, the new Chiron natal report, which will treat your own Chiron in detail, uh, and also uh, the Chiron audio course. Video is on Chiron natally in the seventh house, the house of other people and relationships. So first I wanna put your attention, before I explain that, on the two intro videos, the Chiron overview, and then also Chiron and energy management that I posted to YouTube recently. Um, it's easy to find them if you just look for the Chiron playlist. I've collected all these uh, house and sign videos and, the, and those two on the same playlist. Uh, it'll explain to you how I treat Chiron as a marker of energetic and emotional sensitivity. And I do this in a certain way that teaches you how to get beyond what is a, what turns out to be a false dichotomy between wounded and wounded healer. There's more to the story. Wounding and healing are byproducts and responses to being sensitive to energy and emotion. So my Chiron teaching has a lot to do with teaching, with explaining to you how you're an energetic being and how to deal with your emotions and your feelings and your vulnerability and sensitivity when it comes to being affected by others' energies and emotions, their needs, their issues, their problems, but then how to deal with your own as well. So uh, Chiron in the seventh house. First, the seventh house is a house of other people. When we look at our charts and we see the seventh house, we very often uh, focus on the relationships that we have or those that we'd like to have or those that we used to have. Um, what's really going on with the seventh house, however, is how we relate to other people, what we expect from them, how we perform, how we behave in relationship. It's not literally only about the relationships that we want or that we would like, that we do have or would like to have or wish we didn't have. Uh, it's really about how we approach and engage with other people. Any planet in your seventh house says that you at first don't know what to do with it. Think about the opposite, the first house. You show up carrying it unselfconsciously uh, unself-aware, you're just being the planet. In the seventh house, you see it in other people. Now, it's part of you, but you at first, by default, don't know how to own it. So Chiron in the seventh, energetic sensitivity, the need to be compassionate in the face of suffering and pain and uh, sorrow and grief and other people's energies and emotions. With Chiron in the seventh, you're not going to be quite sure how to deal with that. You're going to see other people being vulnerable but you might not yourself be, be tapped into that part of you. So what can often happen with seventh house planets is that the chart holder will draw to him or her a bunch of examples in the form of other people, this energy. So Chiron represents feeling sensitive, being vulnerable, carrying past wounding, having an inner kid run one's life. Check out the Chiron overview video and you'll understand that explanation. Um, you know, so wounded bird, bird syndrome is one thing I call it, wounded bird syndrome, where everyone you attract seems to have something very obviously unprocessed or some kind of pain they don't know what to do with. Um, that's just one phase of being chironic. It's, but as I said, it's energetic sensitivity. Wounding and healing are results or reactions to the sensitivity. So you may also draw shamanic types people who transform energy, people who are so sensitive, but they're grounded and mature and they don't take everything personally, that's also possible in there. So essentially with Chiron in the seventh house natally, you're drawing other people so you can have Chironic relationships, dot, 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 so you can learn to recognize your own Chiron, own sensitivity, vulnerability, childhood wounding, infant, you know, your sense of rejection from being very young because Chiron wounding is always triggered right before, during, or after birth uh, when we're too young to deal with it and too young to mature, maturely handle it. So you're going to find other people who may not know how to take responsibility for themselves, dot, 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 because you need to learn to see how you may not take responsibility for yourself. You're going to draw other people who are unprocessed regarding their feelings about their family and their past, dot, 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 because you need to see, so you get the pattern, whatever.
one issue is in relationship, it's these people are showing up, they're magnetized to you so you can learn to see and own this within yourself. So how do you deal with your own vulnerability, your insecurity, your sense of feeling worthy of rejection or not worthy of love and acceptance and support? How do you deal with that? Are you aware that these parts of you exist? With Karen and the Seventh, you may not be aware. You may just think the world is full of people who are messed up or broken or why is everybody whining about all their problems? That will be one response to it. Another response would be to run to help everybody because you're feeling what they're feeling. Chiron is in the house of the other. You can feel what's happening in other people. So you might rush to try to save them or help or heal or nurture them too. But you will over, well, pretty quickly you will learn whether or not you own it and move on or not. You learn that you can't really help other people. They have to help themselves. All you can do is reflect to them where they are in their journey, dot, 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 just as they're reflecting to you where you are in your journey in admitting your softness, your, your sense of, uh, your fears of rejection, your pain from being abandoned or whatever it is from the chironic, the chironic uh, frequencies from the past, from your childhood, including infancy, that you've carried forward. So you can just be confused because the world's full of wounded people. Uh, that's option A. Option B is what I just described with, or you can rush to help everybody. Or uh, option C is you can vacillate and try to figure out the right thing uh, to do with it. So um, how much can I afford to give? How much can I deal with? How much should I, you know, these questions come up. And again, whatever you see in other people, it's reflecting what's your relationship, your own situation. So if you draw a bunch of people with addictions, uh, if you draw a bunch of people with unprocessed mommy and, and or daddy issues, if you draw a bunch of people who uh, rejection, whatever the pattern is, it could be all these things, but whatever the pattern is, um, that's what your pattern is, but you're not yet aware of it. So you, you, these people are in your life, so you stand up and own what it is you need to do for yourself. With all of our Chiron processes, we have to become the parents we need now for our inner kids that we needed then. Or now we have to become the parents we needed when we were young. So you can make a list of what you wish your parents would have been for you or you. And then look at your friends and your family and your lovers and say, okay, one by one, everyone's off the hook because I'm going to own this. I'm never going to not listen. I'm never going to ignore my sensitivity, my sense of this is right for me, this isn't right, or this dynamic is healthy or it isn't. In that process, you will find that part of you fears terribly being alone, the sense of reject rejectability or being rejected and abandoned. So this, let's say you identify a dynamic in your life that doesn't work. Part of you will not want to end that relationship or to speak up and change it because part of you expects things to be unfair because your needs and relationship don't matter. That's kind of the holdover from when you were a baby. Chiron in the seventh says, I tried to connect with you and you weren't available or you hurt me and I needed safety. Something didn't go well and I didn't get what I needed. So you might not even be a stir within relationship you don't want to be rejected. You don't want to find out you're worth not being loved or worth being uh, uh, made to be alone or something like that. So this is a complex process. I know this is a short video. Uh, this is a complex process. If you want the full story on your own Chiron in the seventh, get the new Chiron natal report, which treats how sign and aspect of your natal Chiron and also if it's retrograde. And it also does transits and progressions to your natal Chiron and transits of Chiron to your natal chart, the rest of your natal chart, including angles, nodes and all the planets. So um, I'm really excited about getting that report out to you. It's been, um, I toyed with it several years ago when I was writing it, but now it's finished and I'm, I'm launching it and telling people about it. So all that, uh, you can see that at tdjacobs.com. Uh, thanks for your time and energy and uh, I hope this is helpful. Stay tuned for more videos in this series. Goodbye.